Hi guys, Danny here, and welcome to my play world. Now, like usual, let me go over what's different. As you can see, I've nearly emptied out the uh, rotary craft room because I got myself a bigger room because, you know, this is a very small place for such an awesome and extensive mod. Uh, what else? I have this redstone torch here for absolutely no reason. Um... And yeah, actually everything else should be exactly the same. I have made one big diff um, change. You can see extra pipes going across the room. That's because... Oh yeah, and the Arcane Guardian as well. You can see it in the minimap. Uh, there's like a square with a red... Uh, or, you know, there's a red square with a question mark over there. That's where the Arcane Guardian is. Basically, I summoned it. And I was trying to find a good way to kill it. But I couldn't find a good way. Uh, if I want, if I went over there, um, you know, uh, flew around a bit, and start attacking it, I could probably kill it. But it'll take me a good amount of time, so I'd rather keep it alive until I uh, increase my Ars Magical level. As you can see, I'm level 17 right now. I made myself a couple of spells. Well, I think I just made myself one spell. Dig. That was not only to increase my um, magic level, uh, just, you know, uh, making dig and just digging around is actually a very good way to increase your level. But it was also because I wanted to dig around a little bit without having a pickaxe on me all the time. Uh, what else? Um, that's about it, actually. <laughs> Except for the, you know, the biggest change. As you can see, I took away the hydrokinetic engine from there because I put it down here. Welcome to my rotary craft room. This is just the uh, prototype. I literally just built this. And I haven't tested it at all. I haven't tested it um, at all. Basically, it's a very interesting build. Um, the water drops down here, creating energy with the hydrokinetic engine. I've already done that with the other one. But unlike before, where I use coils, I decided not to. I just have a couple of CVTs over there converting the power, or you know, the ratio of the power into the appropriate amount and distributing it between that grinder and that grinder. Now, this is actually for ore processing, except for this one right now is probably making some lubricant for me. I need to set up uh, a third grinder, maybe a fourth one as well, just making uh, lubricant and pumping it inside of the hydrokinetic engine. But basically how this works is, I didn't realize this before, but the grinder can actually be used to turn ore into, into, just give it a second, like the extractor, which can be used to uh, convert ore into around eight flakes. Um, this uh, grinder has a chance to convert it into three flakes. Now, why the, oh, okay, that went through, I guess. I accidentally tested it out without meaning to. Okay, well, I'll tell you what happens after that. Um, after the item has been grinded into flakes, it goes by item ducts into this chest. And from this chest, I've just been using some stone transport pipes up till here. And then it goes through there. And then it gets passed down there. And it goes inside the infernal furnace. And... There you go. Now the reason I use the Infernal Furnace is... Oh, no, wait, no, I caught it. That's not right. What's happening? Something's happening that's not supposed to happen. Let me test that one more time. Uh, basically, that should go... I don't know. The flake is traveling alongside the pipe. It's not traveling in the pipe. That's really weird. Is that just a visual bug? Or is that actually happening? Now it's inside of it again. If I walk away... No, it, it is outside. I have no idea what's happening here. Let's see if it works. Uh, coal flakes go there. And they get thrown into the infernal furnace. Let's see, I don't have it. If I go closer to it, still don't have it. I should find out in a second if it worked or not. Because I might have coal in there. Oh, perfect! I created liquid experience. Awesome! Did I create coal as well? 
Perfect. It works though, that's awesome. Basically, I decided not to use the extractor because not only would I need around 4 million power, I wanted to create like an automatic system. Somewhere where I wouldn't have to deal with anything using rotary craft. I already had one using um, uh, thermal expansion. But I decided to go all out with the rotary craft. So what happens is I create uh, power using the hydrokinetic engine, gets passed across into those true extractors, sorry grinders. The grinders grind up the ores for me into three flakes and the three flakes get turned into various amount of ores. And I say various amount of ores because it actually differs from uh, ore to ore. For example, if I throw in the Cerstus Quartz Flakes, I get, uh, don't mind that, you actually get three. You get three flakes from any one ore. If I'd used it in the extractor, you can see it there. There's a 50% duplication chance per stage. I've shown that. The average is five. So what I did is, without all the hassle and without having to c build another six hydrokinetic engines, I made, you know, three instead of two. Now, yes, there is a method you can use with thermal expansion where you can use sand or sludge to create three. But with this method, there's actually a chance to create more as well. Uh, and with the extractor, you know, you, I'd have to fiddle on with different, uh, different amounts of energy if I wanted to uh, automate it completely. Uh, I'd need to produce, like I said, 4 million uh, watts of power, which would be eight of those hydrokinetic engines. And I just don't have the resources to build that right now. So what happens here is, and the pipe over there connects to this chest here, and then it goes to these various grinders. The grinders grind them up for me, turn them into flakes, and it goes over to that chest and into that infernal furnace, like I said. Now why the infernal furnace? Well, number one, it's free. You know, that's always a good thing. And number two, and this is the important bit, the infernal furnace has a small chance to double anything you smelt inside of it. And when I say anything, I mean anything. There have been times where I actually gotten double the amount of chips from, um, what is it, Applied Energistics. And from that moment on, I've done all of my smelting in the Infernal Furnace as soon as I've built it. Now, a couple of more things. Yes, the pipes are a little messy right now, but like I said, this is just my initial design. I literally just built this. I had just a second ago with the first time testing it and for the next episode I'm actually thinking of creating oh there's an ice cream truck outside um, a TE system not a TE system sorry an AE system uh, to you know uh, incorporate all of these things the reason I did this was because I wanted to create um, let's see if I have the book with me there you go what I wanted to build was one of these guys. Give me a second. Uh, here. The Sencha engine. And the Sencha engine is added by one of the um, Thomcraft add ons that I did a review on. And all I need to do is supply it with either Harbor or Ignis. Uh, does it work with magic? No, it works with Herba. Fire, wood, the Herba, or rock even rock so you know even if I was like uh, getting uh, netherrack and turning it into ignis and saxum I can actually use the saxum to create energy which is awesome and my initial idea was to use this to create energy for my applied energistic system not just my uh, initial idea it's my current idea as well but to do that I decided that I should create a you know, a proper automated uh, smelting and ore processing system. That's because I'm nearly completely out of iron. Let me show you guys. Oh, and you guys might have noticed that I've been just, you know, been able to fly just like this. The reason is the thing that I talked about in the last episode. Um, the flying ability, as you can see from my side, I've lost a bit of a bit more of my power. And you can see it there against the sandstone or is that limestone? That I have the bad aspect. Bad aspect. That sounds cool, but I don't know what it's called. Basically, I have the power of the bat. I made a mistake last episode. I said the zombie had a passive buff. It does not. The bat, however, does. With the bat passive buff, I can fly. Just like that. All I need to do is hold shift and I fly up. Alternatively, I could hold shift while I'm falling and I, you know, lessen the amount of um, fall damage that I get. 
Um, you can see the active uh, buffs I have there. I think I get 10 every time I kill an animal. But basically the active buff for the bat is night vision. And I already have night vision with my night vision helmet. So I'm just using the bat for its flying ability. It's pretty handy, but you know, it's mostly to just go straight up. And yeah. Oh, and another thing. Um, the dark nexus here. I found a way to use rotary craft to create a lot of dark essence. Basically, let me, come on, elevator. Um, if I click here, look how much uh, dark uh, uh, essence I have. Uh, what I did was, as you can see, I have the bedrock pickaxe. And the bedrock sword. I think I already showed that the last episode. I'm pretty sure I showed that the last episode. All I need to do is place a spawner on the ground. And... Or, you know, just normal spawners. I asked Reika about this. This is, uh, you can change it in the configs, but... I thought there was a skeleton in there. But the normal, or, you know, the, the config, the option that comes directly with the mod, is basically any time you break a monster spawner, it creates, like, or rather it spawns around 30 of that mob. So whenever I broke this spawner, even if I placed it down and broke it again, I get around 30 uh, skeletons spawned around me and all I need to do is take that go upstairs place it down break it with my bedrock pickaxe and then the 30 sp uh, something just died or oh, the zombie just died and the 30 skeletons get spawned I don't get any mob drops but they all get well you know nearly all of them get pulled inside of the dark nexus creating a lot of dark uh, essence for me dark essence dark essence which is pretty handy you know, if I was actually using it for something. But I'm not, so it's fine. Um, should I kill this guy? Yes, let's see how many uh, things I can get. How many... That's not it. How many uh, Ender Pearls? Where are you, Enderman? Did you give up? It's not like an Enderman to give up on fighting. Okay, well, whatever. Um, back into the hole. Okay. I should have a really good amount of lubricant inside of the hydrokinetic engine. It's starting to lag more for some reason. Yeah. I think it's because of extra utilities. I have a, a save where I'm not using extra utilities. Or rather, I have a different Minecraft folder, .minecraft. And I don't lag at all, even when I'm recording. You can probably notice that in my review videos. I don't lag as hard as I do in the survival ones. I think it's because extra utilities. But I want to use extra utilities, and the lag isn't that bad. So I think I'll just deal with it for now. Okay, um, what else? Uh, I think that's about it. Now, what I had planned for this episode was to create this system. And it actually filmed me making the system. But then I made so many, I changed my mind so many times because I tried to use um, the seals from, um, what is it called, Thomic Exploration. I tried to use the seals. I could make the normal seals, but I couldn't make the chest binding seals, so that idea was scrapped. And then I, and I, then I decided to use ender chests to, you know, transport it here. And then I scrapped that idea. So after a while, it was just. Uh, you know, random pieces of uh, film and didn't really make sense. Also, uh, the video also got corrupted for some reason, so I was like, ah, it's fine, I'll just create a new save altogether, even if it is just to test out my system. So, yeah, let me test out my system. <laughs> um, this lubricant, okay, that has a good amount of lubricant, and because of the high speed, um, it's around 4096 radians per second. You can see that the operation time is 8.95 seconds. And that's actually not that bad because usually the grinder takes a lot more time. Let's see what the usual time is. Um, and the numbers don't go up like you don't increase the speed by 10 and it doesn't go up by one second or something. It grow Okay, I can't really see it right now. It goes up incrementally, logarithmically. It goes up one of those ways. 
To, okay, I'm just spawning a, a grinder to show you guys how much time it usually takes. 45 seconds it usually takes with the minimum amount of energy. Because I use the hydrokinetic engine, I create it really quickly. So 8.5 something seconds. Now, because it doesn't use up that much lubricant, I could probably just set up one of these guys. Um, a grinder using an AC engine and probably have enough lube to go around. So, okay, here we go. Time for the test. Throw uh, uh, coal inside of here. It gets transported to one of these guys. And that's already been tested. Perfect. And that works as well, so that's good. Now, what I need is moonstone or perfect. See, what I want to do is... Now, admittedly, some of the items that I got won't be mined up by the boring machine because you know I have uh, silk touch with my pickaxe but uh, you can actually enchant some of the machines from rotary craft with various enchants so I'm going to have to check if you can actually enchant a boring machine with um, what is it called oh yeah the Reka also added a few more uh, machines and I'm actually working on a breeder reactor video because Reka finally released all of the graphics so it's actually completely done so it's just a matter of time before I release it it's actually quite exciting here you go uh, so machines can be enchanted blah 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 borer can be received borer can receive silk touch fortune efficiency borer yeah perfect I'm gonna have to create myself a nice way to get um, enchanted books the following machines can be enchanted arrow gun silk touch to enchant a machine right click it with an enchanted book so that should be really quick uh, and simple I don't need to create an anvil or anything okay um, I should create that but right after I test the system basically what I need to get is actually I don't need to get anything let me just go here and the machine should just send ores along it should work with the moonstone ore and like I said this system is a bit flawed because if it doesn't recognize an item like here it just keeps it there indefinitely until I come here and remove it so that's kind of a hassle but if I send items along it should be quite simple. All I need to do is go over here, take the blue one, not the blue one, red one, this one, definitely. Take this one and add the moonstone ore to it. So let me just go here and right click, throw the moonstone ore just there and place it back. Where was it? I think it was in the yellow place. Was it? Yeah. Okay, let's see if it works. Throw the moonstone ore, and it should travel along those way path. In fact, I could probably trace its path if I'm quick enough. I have the machine here that does it. Actually, never mind. I probably won't be quick enough anyways. As long as the item isn't thrown in here, it should pass really quickly across the path to here. I need to create a better way of getting in here and into these machines did you go inside any of these guys I wouldn't know well let's see. is that moonstone in there yeah it is perfect that's awesome it works oh this is awesome so let's see, the amount of flakes going in there. How many ores did I have? I think I had three, which would be converted into three flakes. So na normally I should get 10 moonstone. But if I'm lucky, I might get an extra one. I just need to move back. Huh, it didn't do its thing. Okay, did it really get thrown out? Okay, it made one moonstone. But I think the rest got thrown out. That's not good. 
see the pipes I'm using are really slow and over here it just drops them in I don't like using this method I usually have golems dropping them in but I have no choice now and for that reason because I don't have the golems made already and I don't have the research for it and to pass that I'm just using a compactor transfer pipe here it's supposed to take all of those items and compact them into one big one but it's not working for some reason and because it's not working it's sending the items items across one by one and that has a chance to just throwing the items randomly out of the infernal furnace and that's never a good thing or did it work that time it might have worked that time no it did not damn it mm. give me a second guys maybe I need to use hoppers or something I'll figure something out and I'll be right back okay I think it's kinda stable now uh, like I said before this method is actually pretty hit and miss because um, I, I don't know, it's just the pipes when the items get dropped out of there, just this fling in a random direction. And let's see, stone, uh, food pipe. I need to find a, maybe if I find a pipe that's slower than a stone, it should work. Um, let's see, stone, pipe, transport pipe, transport. I could use a dropper or something, but... And because I had the vacuum drop vacuum hopper here, it'll it'll suck in any items that have been dropped around it. It has to be dropped, you know, completely uh, on top of it, or rather inside it, like I have it right now. Uh, round robin compactor, that's the one I'm using right now. Insertion, that I think only works with chests and things. Extraction, crossover, advanced wooden transport, phased closed transport switch transport compactor I use the stone for that basic medium drag I need basic high drag I think for that I need to use cobblestone pipe mm, let's see blah basic pipe high drag one connect to stone or quartz yeah I think that's what I'm going to do I'm gonna create myself some cobblestone pipes and because they'll be slower while they go through the pipe it should work better uh, not 100% sure, but it should. Okay, here we go. I have the cobblestone pipe just morphing into a bat. And here. Now, the unlucky thing is when the stone pipes get... Oh, okay, handy enough. The sto when the stone pipes got broken... Yeah, there you go. It gets thrown in there. <laughs> um, once I died, I was in bat form. I died because I fell in there. And I think... No, I was in... Uh, what was it? What's that? Well, I forget what that mob is called. Silver? No. Silver something? How did I forget what it was called? It's such a... Silver? No. No silver? Silverfish. How did I forget that? Basically, I was in silverfish form because that's actually a smaller form than the bat. Meaning I can even squeeze through. Say I put down a pipe and I just have a one by one hole. I can actually push through that. I'm pretty sure I could have pushed through here if I was a silverfish. And I fell in there. And the unlucky thing is, uh, unlike the bat, the silverfish can't fly, so I died. But the funny thing is, I had a lot of ores in my inventory, and the odd got smelted for me, which made me laugh. But yeah, random story aside, here we go. Stone pipe, eh, I don't need it, I'll just throw it in there. Just lava anyways. There you go. Now the cobblestone transport pipe should be slower, meaning it shouldn't, you know, spaz out as much. Um, there we go. Throw in a couple of iron flakes. And it goes up. Slowly. I don't mind the speed. If need be, I could use something. I could use a faster pipe, maybe a gold or an emerald. No, I think emerald is only for extraction. It goes to the pipe that pushes it all together. So instead of being one by one, it goes as a group, you can see. And never mind the graphical, graphic bug. Okay. I don't know if it worked there or not. Same thing happened. Oh, we'll know in a second. If they start churning out iron bars, iron uh, ingots, I'm done. Come on. 
what happened? What just happened? Did that not work? I don't even know. I wish it'll at least tell me if it didn't work or not. Okay, time for a proper test. I'm gonna throw in a whole, uh, not a whole stack, but you know, it, it was a good amount. And I only have 64 iron flakes in there. So this is either going to work, or I'm going to have to create a new system. Maybe do a lot more research until I get golems and stuff. If this does work, I'll be sad I can set up my boring machine after I, you know, enchant it with silk touch. And maybe fortune. No, I don't need fortune if I have silk touch. Okay, it gets rounded up. It should be rounded up into stacks of 64, but since it is... Okay, got thrown out. That's very unfortunate. It seems to work when it's one item at a time. No. Oh. Oh. It's giving me iron nuggets. Meaning it worked. Totally worked. And there you go. Oh, no, wait, no, I have the flakes in my hand. Okay, it partially worked, which is a good thing. Um, say I was using... Uh, anyways, that, that was the extra thing that I was talking about. It gives you extra nuggets. If you were making food, it would give you nuggets as well. But if you're using an item that doesn't have a nugget form, it would just give you, you know, um, one of the item. Um, did I create a... F oh, okay, just a tiny amount of XP. Now, this isn't a good system at all. I think I might need to create some golems. This is a really bad system, if anything else. I don't think I have any of the golems set up. I mean, researched. So, let's see. Just the basic golem. Uh, that won't do. I don't really want to make two. 62. Did more get made? I think definitely more got made this time. So like I said, it's a really hit or miss uh, kind of system. You either make it or you don't make it. Uh, you know what? I'll take it. I'll just mine. I mean, throw these guys inside of the chest. And we'll see how much is made. Now, another cool thing about using this system is you can see the emerald ore flakes. So, you know, I get three uh, emerald flakes out of one emerald ore. Emerald ore. And same with the fire infused flakes. Now, here's something crazy about the fire infused flakes. With each fire infused flakes, I get... Where is it? Fire infused flakes. Redstone. You. There you go. I get four shards. Meaning, if I create... Sorry, if I have one of the fire infused block I get three of the flakes and each of the flakes has a shard meaning I get 12 shards from one uh, ore which is awesome okay here we go throw these guys so like I said it's a really hit or miss system and all I can do is observe so I'll, you know, stay quite a bit of a distance away and I'll be right back when it's all done or when the whole thing breaks. Uh, okay guys, it's nearly done. I also realized what I could do to maybe, uh, you know, uh, stop the whole falling out thing from happening a lot. I think it's because I don't have any Ignis around it. Now, like I said, I've used this build before. Not the rotary craft mind, uh, the whole uh, using the infertile furnace to create extra item bits. And I used the pipe method un until I got the golems, I can see it just being fl flung out. And I think it's because I have a lack of ignis. Ignis makes it smelt faster, meaning the items will be drawn in faster. That might be the reason. Okay, so it's all done. Let me go closer and see how much it was made. Okay, well, a good chunk of the items were not made. Um, now I don't know if the items are still being made as we speak, or whether they just got thrown randomly in a random direction. Well, okay, no, actually, I think the items are actually being made as we speak. So, what is it? Half of the iron flakes, uh, none of the emerald, I'm pretty sure there were some redstone, a majority of the coal, 
the moonstone gem uh, you get items in gem form just put them in your crafting table and you get it in the item form and let's see chimerite getting a good amount of iron as well and some extra iron nuggets as you can see I've already made nine okay I've nearly made two extra ingots which you might argue is nothing but you know it's it's better than nothing <laughs> and a leather why do I have a leather there did I accidentally put that in there or did I get it um well there you go it isn't a perfect method but it works and basically what I'm going to do for the next episode set up a boring machine no 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 I'm going to do that in the meantime in the meantime I'm gonna create a boring machine do a lot more research get myself an Essentia engine and you know some Ignis so I'm just gonna start smelting some netherrack continuously and maybe try to get the jars as well and after that I'll have a jar here I'll have a jar powering the the Essentia engine or maybe I'll use Saxon for the Essentia engine either way and after that I think that's about it and maybe to get some golems as well uh, create a ooh, that's a nice amount of experience collected uh, huh. either way this I like this method um, because it, it uses r r rotary craft if nothing else it's a it's a bit difficult because I haven't actually seen any uh, let's players actually create a proper system and I have actually looked them up um, like I said most of the people who are good with rotary craft not a lot of them have YouTube channels so I guess I'm here as a rep representative of them ah not bad if I had an Ignis uh, if I had some Ignis here it would go faster in fact, for demonstration purposes, I think I'll just uh, get myself one. Um, if I hadn't done this, it, it would have done it in its normal speed. But just f to make it a bit faster. Not a void chest. Uh, sorry, void jar. Uh, here we go. And Ignis. Just to see how much actually did get made. Ignis, 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 Ignis. So, just like that. And we should see it speeding up. Quite a, uh, quite a good speed, actually, if I remember correctly. There you go, iron bar. Iron bar. There you go, the speed is a lot better. So the item production will be a lot faster. Um, ooh, I've already created a good amount of iron. Uh, okay, I'll be back in a second again for the final time to see if all of the items are made. And how much experience I would have collected by then. So I'll be back in a second again. And there we go. I think it's finally finished. Let me just break this. I think it'll just be sucked in here. Come on, let me get to the chest. I'll just throw that away. Like I said, that was just to speed things up. It doesn't actually give me a bonus. But here we go. Let's see. I got a good amount of these guys. Good amount of order shards. A nice amount of fire shards. Uh, what else? Like I said, an awesome amount of iron. I got into three iron, plus I got a load of nuggets as well. And that could come in handy. Copper ingots. I think if I put this in my... Yeah. Oh, no, it, it doesn't really matter. I have the ore dictionary to help me anyways. Uh, the moonstone. Yeah, I'm fine with the moonstone. I still get a lot more moonstone than I would get normally. Um, what else? I got a couple of copper nuggets. And, you know, ooh, nice amount of coal as well. So, yeah, that's that. Um, like I said, this method would be an earlier stage version of the extractor. Now, if I do decide to expand, maybe with more hydrokinetic engines or one of the further higher tiers engines that uses the jet fuel, I might actually go to that, but even this way isn't that bad. Instead of just getting into two, or a chance of getting into two, I'm definitely getting into two, I mean into three, and even more at times. So yeah, I think this will do quite well for me, for the time being. 
And that is it for this episode. I know I didn't do an, a lot of active uh, building or things like that. But like I said, I had already filmed this. This is my second try. And I think it's just a schematic or just a... Um, just working out or showing you guys how this works. I think that was pretty interesting as well. Um, I just recent I just checked while I was waiting if there were actually automatic ore processing videos. There wasn't, so <laughs> you will just have to settle for this. Um, as you can see, I have the levers there. Uh, I might install uh, pneumatic servos. I was just doing this for the time period, like I said, proof of concept. And uh, when I start the applied energistics, this will be even more um, enclosed. But yeah, like I said, this is it. Uh, if you like the video, please leave a like or subscribe for more Minecraft videos. Thanks for watching, guys.